Hello everyone, my name is Ambuj and today we are going to discuss how to configure different um, demultiplexed T1, E1 and T3, E3 um, controllers out of a STM or OC3 SPA. So as you can see on your screen I have this nice topology which might look a little confusing to a lot of people but let's try to understand and let's try to solve the puzzle how it works. Just to give you a brief introduction um, here, I have a STM N interface where N represents the number of STN, STMs on a specific SPA. So for example in my demonstration I'll be using a STM1. So for me N is equal to 1. So for a STM1 you can have a single AUG okay, and for each AUG you can have either AU4 or you can have up to 3 AU3. Now if you don't understand AUG, AU4, AU3, don't worry. When we have a hands-on demonstration it will be very clear to you guys. All you need to know is uh, what is a T1, what is a E1, that's all. Now as, as I told you from, from an AUG you can have up to 1 AU4 and up to 3 AUG3, AU3. Per AU4 you can have up to 3 TUG3 as you can see the number into 3 here and per TUG3 you can have up to 7 TUG2 and in TUG2 you can have various modes for example you can have C11, C12 or C2 mode depending on what kind of uh, end bandwidth you're looking for. Similarly if you follow this path the red line you can have AU3 which can have up to 7 TUG2 and each duck can have up to four T1s. Now if from a configuration perspective or from a provisioning perspective if you're a service provider and you want to demultiplex your network into multiple T1s and you want uh, to provision your end customers probably this is the path you'll be following. So you'll have a mode of C11 as you can see here. You'd be a part of TUC2 you'd be part of one of the AU3s and then you'd be part of this AUG. Okay, So let's try to configure one and uh, let's try to understand the difference. Now understand that T1 circuits are usually used in um, the American con America and uh, E1s are usually used in Europe. So when you're configuring the AUG mapping and if you configure AUG mapping AU3 for example which would follow um, up to T1s and later if you want to configure AUG4 you probably will have to go ahead and remove the complete AU3 configuration. Okay, So we'll configure AU3 first and then we'll go to AU4 mapping. So let's look at the configuration. Now here's my router just to give you a little brief of what this router is. This is a 7600 with six modules in it okay and the image is 2233 SRC and this is advanced IP services image if I look at um, show hardware module all FPT I can see that this is a channelized STM 10C3 SPA which is in the first slot of a SIP 400 which is in the first slot of the 7600 router. Okay, So let's start the configuration. So to configure this I'll configure controller sonnet 1 slash 1 slash 0 which is the first port of the SPA since it's a single port and we'll configure the framing. Now majorly there are two framings SDH and sonnet. In this case we are going to configure SDH now once you've configured SDH framing and if you put a question mark majorly there are two options that you see from a configuration perspective. E either you configure AU3 I'm sorry I think it's already configured just a second I I might have forgotten to remove the configuration mm. oh yeah that's why okay now since I've removed it let me reset it Sorry for the inconvenience. Now, I 
if I do the framing to SDH and if I put a question mark now I see the option now earlier if you remember we saw AU3 and AUG here but because it was configured for AU3 now majorly from a configuration perspective you'll have two options AUG or AU4 now if you AU4 is here because by default the um, the configuration is for AU4 and not AU3 so in this example what we're going to do is first we'll configure T1 remove it and then we'll configure E1 okay so to do that the first thing we need to do is configure AUG mapping now if you configure the mapping there are only two options as you can see and AU4 is default and that's the reason you see AU4 here so let's start with AU3 sorry okay nothing much now we need to define what do we want to do for AU3 for AU3 and since there are three AU3s as you can see in the topology for each AUG you can configure up to three AU3 so question mark you can see all the three for the first one let's see what we want to do now if you, if, you, if you see here the mode has changed to controller AU3 now whatever you configure would be a part of AU3 now the only thing which is a part of AU3 is stock 2 now before that if you want you can define the mode as well now if you put a question mark there's an option called mode and majorly you can see that this can be configured as mode C11 which is nothing but uh, uh, demultiplex into a T1 so let's configure the mode and this is also by the way the default mode and let's then configure the talk to value now each AU3 can have up to seven talk values which you can see in the topology here talk to can have into seven okay so let's start configuration so for talk one I want to configure a T1 and this will be the first T1 since every talk to can have up to four T1s and I will go ahead and configure the channel group 1 time slot 1 slash 24 similarly I can configure the second one and similarly the third one and the fourth one now if you want to configure the fifth one again you'll have to go back to tug 2 and select the second tug value instead of 1 okay so if I do a show IP interface brief and I include serial I'll have a couple of fancy serial interfaces generated by now as you can see I have two serial interfaces generated so let's try to interpret it interpret it and read it as we understand here and also let me resize this image so that I can show you what what am I really looking at mm. okay come on okay anyways you'll get the idea so this is the first module this is the first slot of the LC or your SIP this is the first port of the SPA this is AU31 since you can configure up to three AU3 so we're looking at the first AU3 here in the first AU3 we are looking at the first TUG2 and in the first TUG2 we are looking at the first T1 which has a channel group number of 1 similarly here I have first slot sub slot port number this is the first AU3 I'm looking at the first TUG2 and the second T1 similar way I can go ahead and configure multiple and multiple T1s on this interface okay let me configure one, one more and this time I'm going to take a different AU value AU3 and 2 okay so earlier we configured in AU2 so this value was 1 in the previous configuration now it should be 2 and here I can again have up to 7 tucks and I'm going to configure tuck 2 for example in this case and I'm going to configure a first T1 with channel group number 1 and time slot 1 slash 24 so if I do show IP interface brief and I include serial as I can see here this is again slot sub slot port number of the spa and this is the second um, AU3 group and this is talk 2 and second talk 2 and this is the first T1 with channel group number of 1 okay so this is how I can configure my various T1s now if at this stage if I put a question mark there is completely no option of AU3 Oh, sorry AU4 even if I do a AUG 
and if I try to do a mapping of AU4 it won't let me do it will ask me to remove the previous ones okay so let's delete it and let's see the configuration from an AU4 perspective okay so I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do a note to this and I'm going to do a note to this and I'm going to do a note to AUG mapping AU3 a note to it and now I can configure a mapping of AU4 okay now if you put a question mark you'll see that the option of AU4 is back again okay now for configuring AU4 uh, with the help of AU4 you can configure your channel as T3, E3 or E2 okay but the way to follow AU4 would be something like this so in AU4 instead of configuring TOG2 I'll be configuring TOG3 and under each TOG I can either specify a mode and configure my T3, E3 interfaces or I can configure TOG2 and further demultiplex into E ones, okay. So let's configure it. So I'm going to configure a AU4, and since there is only one AU4, as you can see in the topology here, in the picture here, only single AU4, in this, as compared to three AU3 which you had. Okay. Now for each, for the first AU4, for AU4 one, that's right. Okay. I need to configure the tug value here itself. For tug three. And say so for tug three, I can have up to three tugs. For the first tug, let's see how we're going to proceed. Now, two things as I told you: either I can specify the mode, or I can specify tug two, and I can further divide it. So, if I specify mode, there are three modes: C12, E3, and T3. So, if I take C12, I can define tug two values. I can I can go ahead and do these things. C12 will give me E ones. Okay. I can define a T3 which will give me a T3 circuit or I can define a E3 which will give me a E3 circuit. So let's let's first define the mode as C12. Okay, and for C12 I can define tug 2 and for the first tug, if you put a question mark, I have a E1 unlike T1 which I had in AU3. Okay. And for the first one I'm going to do a channel group 1 times slot 1 slash 31. And if I do a show IP interface brief now and if I include serial I again have a serial interface now let's try to understand this one in this I have slots sub slot and spa port number okay this is the AU4 first one this is tug 3 first tug 3 and I can have up to three of them I have the first tug 2 I can have seven of them and I have the first even with channel group 1 simple okay now let's try to configure uh, since we have, we can if you if I want, I can I can go ahead and configure multiple uh, tugs, which I which I don't want to do now. So as I told you, I can configure up to three tug values. For the second tug, I'm going to configure the mode this time as T3. Now, as soon as I configure the mode, and if I do a show IP interface brief, you can see the serial interface has come up. I have another serial which is slot sub slot spa port number zero for the first AU4 and this is the second tug 3 okay so as you can see the second tug 3 and if I do a uh, do show interface serial I need to disable the console login uh, to get rid of these messages okay now if you see this is this is like a normal t3 so if you want to enable a PPP or SDLC your frame relay or you want to make it a part of your MPLS or uh, if you want to troubleshoot it's very similar to how you would do on a normal serial interface so I hope uh, it all makes sense to you and you should be able to use it for your production as well as um, learning purpose right now you you see that the serial interface is down down state that's because I haven't connected the cable to the remote site but I have another 12k router which is connected back to back um, not the cable but the similar spark card so I just need to have a cable connected and it should come up so the whole idea was to show you how does the configuration uh, works and I hope that after going through this video you would be able to configure 
as well as um, monitor and most importantly when you see such a serial interface you should be able to visualize what you're looking at and uh, you should have the demultiplex structure in your mind when you are doing any such troubleshooting um, so that's all for now and thank you so much for watching this is Ambuch have a great day